all right how's it going everybody today we're going to be doing another nomad survival guide and this guide is going to be on the second map i made the third map yesterday so i figured might as well go on and just carry through with all of the maps so we're going to be doing the crossroads today which is the second map we'll just hop right into character selection uh the crossroads definitely is not as difficult as the third map but it is significantly harder than the first uh the dry marsh is definitely a good intro map it's very open gives you a lot of places to run stuff like that whereas the crossroads you're a little bit more limited and the map mechanics are a little bit more difficult so this definitely increases the things that you kind of have to think about so in general i wouldn't really say there's one class that is like bad on this map every class can clear this map very comfortably um i obviously as always lean towards crusader cultist the divine quickling necromancer is actually very strong on this map uh, the knight is also extremely strong, and the Whisperer actually is incredibly good. Mostly because if you can pair, well, if you have the statue unlocked, that heritage, you can pair that with the Whisperer, and it is fantastic on this map. But outside of maybe like the Adventurer and the Ratfolk Archer being a little bit weaker than the other classes, every single class is going to do very well on this map. So I'll go forward with the Cultist. Uh, in regards to the heritage, now. It really depends on what you're trying to do with your run. If you're trying to do specific like builds where you have to get certain relics and you're trying to level up a specific weapon skill, I always recommend Nomad. Nomad with the bonus rerolls helps you with both the relic chests as well as getting the weapon skills you want. Uh, I also feel like when I play Nomad, I'm able to get EXP and item pickup very quick in comparison because I can reroll it for them. So it's very strong here. Berserker and Poxbringer, just in general on this map, I don't think are that good, just because there's a lot of map effects that deal damage. So Poxbringer is fine, but the fact that you can't heal with Berserker outside of playing the Knight class now, Berserker I don't think is the best on this map. But granted, if you're doing enough damage, nothing's going to touch you anyways, so in that case it doesn't matter. Voidwalker is always a pretty alright heritage. I mean, it helps you out on the early game, and then later game I don't think it's that impactful. It helps you run around, but Crossroads, you're not going to be moving that much. Summoner, Summoner's never good, honestly. I just, I really hope they buff it eventually. It just doesn't do enough for me. It's okay, you know, early on. But after that, it just falls off very greatly. Merchant, uh, Merchant can be very good here, depending on what class you are. I feel like Merchant, you go into guides, or not guides, sorry, games very, very specifically where you want to use a Merchant, like for the Dungeon Keeper achievement, for example, on the third map. You can't re-roll or use chests anyways, so the double weapon skill amount and the amount plus one is very big for you. Outside of that, I feel like the Merchant's just a fun class to play. I don't think it's the best at anything outside of very specific situations. And then lastly, there's the statue. The statue is really strong on the first and the second map. I don't think you're ever going to be in a situation where you have to worry too much about kind of things that are going on. I like being able to move, so I don't generally play the statue, but the statue works very well together with, like, Quickling because of the defense. Same thing with the Knight as well as the Whisper. Whisper is very strong with the statue, I have to say. But we'll just go Nomad for the sake of time. So, now, the Crossroads, it is a crosshair. So, there's a direction upward, there's a direction left, there's a direction right, and there's a direction down. And there's definitely going to be certain abilities that are stronger on this map versus the other ones. Those abilities that I think are going to be very important. My formula for like winning maps like these is always make sure you have Spectral Sword up to at least level 1. If you think Spectral Sword is very good, like maybe you want to play around it, uh, get it to level 10 as fast as you can. You want to make sure that you get EXP and item pickup range as quickly as possible. The next thing is going to be SP regen depending on what class you're going. Personally, I don't like getting my SP regen up very high when I play things like the Knight or the Divine because I like being able to move and both of those limit how quickly you move. However, if I'm playing Cultus, for example, I want to make sure I get my SP regen up as fast as possible. Now, one of the map mechanics on this map, it spawns portals. They end up at the end of these walkways. Or they can end up in the middle if you are not standing there. But if you're standing in the middle and like hiding around it like I kind of am right now, it's not going to be able to spawn. So if you see yourself getting close to, you know, 5 minutes, 10 minutes, one of those intervals, try and step away from the middle and maybe you can get lucky and have it spawn there. I think it's just a little bit easier to basically deal with those. Um, but back to weapon skills. 
I think the most important weapon skills on this map are directional based weapon skills, so Icicle Barrage and the Great Divider. These are going to be your best friend on this map, they do significant amounts of damage, and they also clear out, especially on this map, the whole screen. Like You can walk in one direction and not worry about the things that are in front of you basically, and that's very very important on this map. So Icicle Barrage and the Great Divider are fantastic, especially if you can get either of them to level 10 or get a relic for either of them, very very strong. Uh, lastly. Depending on what class you're going, but in my opinion, you should always go for a specific weapon that kills bosses quickly. In my opinion, the best thing for that is going to be Fireball. Fireball does the most single target damage, in my personal opinion. I've been able to two-shot and three-shot bosses once it's max level, so it's very good. And the best thing about it, same thing with Magic Missile, if you can't get Fireball, Magic Missile is a great replacement is they target the enemies that are closest to you. So this means if you're standing next to the boss, you're guaranteed to hit the boss. You can't really do that with any other ability, unless you're playing like Colorless Glyph, which obviously has everything on the screen. Same thing with the, the Divine's weapon ability, like those things you can obviously, you're not really targeting it, but it hits everything on the screen anyways. So I, I would highly recommend that. And then Icicle Barrage is very, very strong against bosses also. There are some situations where you're not gonna be able to like, really blow up a boss with Icicle Barrage, but if you have Fireball and Icicle Barrage, you're going to get through the boss very, very quickly, so definitely highly, highly recommend it. So in regards to weapon passive skills, however, honestly, you can kind of do whatever you want on this map. The only things I would say that are not even requirements, but things that I think will just make your gameplay a little bit easier, uh, you want to go item pickup range, you want to go SP regen, you want to go study, which is the EXP bonus. And in my opinion, I really like going max weapon skill size. I think those are extremely helpful. Everything else you can do whatever you want. Um, if you don't know what to pick, pick up Ascension. That really checks a lot of boxes and you don't have to worry too much about, oh, am I getting the right passive skills? Even though Ascension is a weapon skill, not a passive. Ascension is amazing. If you want to see what it does, go ahead and watch my Ascension max level guide. It'll show you what the relics do for Ascension also. So it's just a very good weapon skill that really acts more like a passive now like i was saying every five minutes these chests spawn and these chests are going to have the relics in it now these chests are kind of annoying on this map the reason being they spawn in these walkways and if you don't have good weapon skills to help you walk through these places they get very 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 difficult and the area where they get the most difficult is going to be around 20 minutes and the reason i say that is because 19 20 and 21 at 19 minutes this stuff that i call moon drip spawns from the sky you'll see exclamation marks around you on the map and those can hit you and deal damage to you there's also these little bugs that i'll show you in a little bit that will spawn a little aoe circle that you can't walk through without taking damage it's not you know a large amount of damage by any means it's not really that detrimental but it really impacts your positioning and positioning is very important in a game like this so that's going to be impactful. And at 20 minutes, a portal will spawn. So normally I would say, you know, go get the portal as quickly as you possibly can. You want to make sure you get rid of it. Uh, that way those little extra mobs don't spawn. As well as the chest is super strong. Here's the first boss, by the way. Just don't touch the red circle. You can pretty much stand in the center of it. You don't have to worry too much about it. It's not very that. It's not, it's not like extremely strong, so... As long as you play smart and you don't touch that, which it actually just got a nerf recently, um, you're good to go. The first boss is very simple. That's its only mechanic, so no big deal there. And you can walk around in that circle. The boss is very slow, so first boss is very simple. But as I was saying, at 20 minutes, the portal spawns. At 19 minutes, this little bug spawns. And then at 21 minutes, the third boss spawns. Now, the third boss is definitely the most difficult boss just in regards to its mechanic. So it shoots out two laser beams to the side, which we'll see later. And that boss can basically, between that, the moon drip that's falling from the skies, and the bugs, you can get pushed into those laser beams, and that really deals a lot of damage. This is also impactful with the final boss that spawns, which has accumulation of every single ability. And that final boss is very, very good at forcing you into taking damage. It's a pain, and you have to think about it a lot. Here's those bugs, by the way. It spawns this black circle, 
and that is what deals damage if you walk into it. So it's very annoying because, as you can see, it takes up like halfway of a uh, crossroad, basically. So that is a big deal. But anyways, the th the last boss is very good at forcing you to taking damage, basically because you, no matter what, kind of have to walk into one of the abilities. You just have to pick which one it is. That's why getting high boss damage is very important on this map. So that portal spawned in the center. Uh, so that one's super simple. It just spawned right next to us. We don't have to worry about it too much. And this is one of the things that I find very important with a map like this. And with the third map, the Ruined Dungeon, you want to make sure that you have some type of way to destroy the map actives as fast as possible. And first and foremost, the easiest way to do that is to play the cultist. The cultist can one-shot those map items. It can one-shot the crystal chests in the first map, it can one-shot the portals on this map, and it can one-shot the... I think they're, like, red crystals. I don't know the specific name. I know they're crystals, but I don't know if they're, like, red crystals or what. But it, it can one-shot those also on the third map, and that is extremely, extremely important. It gets more important each map you go up. The second map, the portals don't do that much. They help spawn, like, these little enemies that are kind of annoying, but it's not, like, that big of a deal. But the third map... That is so important, it's not even funny. You want to make sure you get rid of those because it increases the HP. So, the Cultist is a very strong character on every single map. And the next class that I think is very strong is the Quickling, and that's because they can also take care of those very, very quickly. It's funny, Quickling, quickly. Um, and then lastly, the Necromancer. The Necromancer has a very good single target bossing damage as long as you're able to clear out the rest of the mobs and the AI is able to go and focus on the mobs or the portals. The only negative is that when the Necromancer moves left and right in the crossroads, the summons get away from him. They don't stay close to you, they just go after whatever mob is close to you. So that can be very, very detrimental. But other than that, those three classes I think are my favorite on this map. And mostly any map, just purely because of how quickly they can take care of map items. The only negative for the Cultist is that you have no way to hit the boss with your weapon skill. The weapon skill for the cultist does not target the boss, so it's not as strong as some of the other classes that can hit the boss, but you can fill that void in with fireball. So that's about it in regards to normal things. I'm going to go ahead and play through this and I will talk about the three bosses that are going to spawn and we'll go over them when they spawn. So I will catch you guys up then. Here is the 14 minute boss. This is going to be the second boss for the map. This boss is by far the easiest boss. I think it's called like the Rift Walker, but I call him Cthulhu. And it summons these little red specters that you saw. And what those specters do is damage. You can't target them. You can't deal any damage to them, but they can walk into you and they hurt. So just kite, they move very slowly as you can see. I'm pretty sure they move the same exact speed as the specters in the third map, maybe a little bit faster. But it's not something that's really going to impact you. They're really only a pain when the last boss spawns, and that's because, like I said earlier, you are forced into walking into it. So I wouldn't really worry too much about the second boss. It's very simple and straightforward in my opinion you just got to make sure you don't get touched by anything and you're good to go it has no ranged abilities it has no other abilities all it can do is summon those specters that is very very simple to deal with by using the bossing skills like i spoke about earlier as well as the movement skills just do not touch it easy peasy so that one's pretty simple and straightforward and then i will catch you guys at 21 minutes when the third boss spawns Alright, so 
Now we're going to talk about these next minute. So this portal that spawns right here, I do not recommend going for it unless you are playing Quickling or Cultist. The reason being, it's very important to get this thing killed as quickly as you possibly can. I mean, you need to be able to get back to the center by 21. The reason being, the boss that's going to spawn here in a second. So, see, these exclamation marks is what I was talking about. If you get hit by that, you're going to take damage. And then there's also the bugs that are spawned at the same time. And this greatly impacts where you can walk, basically. And, I mean, that's kind of the whole point. Is it, it limits where you're supposed to go. And you'll see how well that works together. Like, it was a very well thought out mechanic by uh, Fox Knox. It was a great decision. Here's the boss. So, it spawns these laser beams that go around it. And I have knockback right now, so it's not that big of a deal. As long as you have Icicle Barrage, it will knock it back. But... If you're not able to put yourself in a situation to make sure the boss can't move forward or you're not going to be able to kill it in time for those laser beams to go around, it is very difficult to... You can walk through it and live, but you have to be full HP, you have to be smart about where you walk through. Um, it's, it's kind of really important. You have to make sure you're also dodging these at the same exact time and you don't have to walk through them to avoid the boss damage. But obviously, if you have to pick one of these or the boss damage, hit, <laughs> take one of these. It only does like 200, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, the last thing I'll say about that third boss is that those laser beams are not infinite. They have a finite distance, so you don't have to really worry too much. If you're able to get it to rotate all the way around, say say my Icicle Barrage is the laser beam right and it's going to hit me. If I just walk backwards, at a certain point, it stops and I don't have to worry about getting hit by them. So, you can play around that. Don't stay very close to that boss. Make sure you're, the middle is the best location for it because you can walk around it. I've been in situations where it's like the boss will spawn, I'm standing against a wall like this. And you're almost unable to avoid it no matter what. So, you just want to make sure that... That is something you take into account, and you want to make sure you bring that logic into the last boss, because the last boss will do the same exact thing. But with the last boss, you have to actually think about a couple more things. But I'll wait until about like 29 minutes, and then we'll start talking about that, guys. So I will speed this up, and I will see you then. Alright guys, so the last boss is going to spawn here in a minute or two, and let's talk about the third, or the final boss. So, the final boss, like on every single map, has a accumulation of every single weapon skill from the bosses. So on this map, it's going to be those red circles from the first boss, it's going to be the specters from the second boss, it's going to be the laser beams from the third boss, and those skills work really really well together i have to say i mean they are very very strong and so what you really need to do is play around the laser beams and avoid the red circles so in the last po uh, patch notes you can see on my patch note video they actually toned down the damage from the red balls from the boss because they would one shot you if you got hit by them unless you were very very lucky maybe you had the negate damage for a second but it one shot you so those are very strong. It does half the damage now, but it's still very good. So you just want to make sure you don't get hit by those. But as you can see, I won't be able to get rid of it because the laser beams are going to hit me. My build's kind of OP, so it's kind of hard to really go in depth on that. <laughs> but the last boss, you just want to make sure you avoid those red circles. Everything else you can deal with. Um, 
If you have to walk outside that circle, just time it to where you don't get hit and you are good to go. All right, so we'll do a quick recap. Uh, Class-wise, you can pick any character you want. There's no bad character on this map. There are some characters that will do less damage, but it's okay. That's not that big of a deal. They're all equally... Okay, they're not equally strong in the beginning, but they are all very strong in the beginning, enough to get you weapon skills to get you started. In regards to heritage, the heritage is the same exact thing. The only like heritage that I don't recommend you playing is the summoner, and I feel like that is because it does absolutely nothing for you. And then I would also think about not playing the berserker here unless you're confident with being able to dodge. Because there's a lot of abilities on this map, not from the mods, but just from the bosses and uh, some of the map effects that can kind of whittle you down slowly so if you're playing the knight and you have that hp that you get back from the weapon skill it might be a little bit doable but outside of the knight character i would not recommend playing berserker but every other heritage feel comfortable doing whatever you want with it they all work very well uh weapon skills as always, this is kind of my tried and true method. Obviously, it depends on what class you are because some weapon skills are really good at clearing versus others. Uh, the, like the cultist, for example. The cultist weapon skill is amazing. Look, it's top DPS in this game. It is fantastic. And I didn't even have mass weapon skill size, which impacts it. So don't, don't worry about it. But I like to always go Ice Skull Barrage and the Great Divider on this map. Directional abilities are very strong. As you saw the last seven minutes, I stood in the same spot and I faced one direction. It's that simple. You don't have to worry about the rest. Chain Light Chalk is going to be good on every single map. Never be afraid to pick that up. It is always a good investment if you are struggling. Chain Light, Chain Light Chalk's amazing. And you can almost always guarantee that you're going to get one or two relics for it. So you can depend on that relic damage. For specific bossing skills, I think it's very important to have a bossing skill. I would always recommend Fireball because it does, I think, the most damage to bosses. And you can target enemies with it by standing close to them. And these bosses, as you saw, you can get pretty close to as long as you're making sure you don't get hit by those laser beams, basically. And the specters. You want to worry about the specters. I've sometimes played too close to that last boss, and it summons, you know, four specters on you at the same time, and you just die almost immediately. So play close, but not too close. Luckily, with the last boss, not that many mobs spawn, so it's not that big of a deal. But make sure you are not that close to them, but <laughs> make sure you can target it. Uh, lastly, just make sure for the portal that spawns at 20 minutes that you think about can i kill this portal in one minute if you can't take care of it in that one minute and it doesn't spawn in the center just leave the portal take care of the boss first and then go kill the portal after the portal effect is not that impactful in general on this map you don't really have to worry about it that much there's an occasional extra mob that's not a big deal it doesn't do that much damage and it's not super annoying so if you can't take care of that portal in one minute, just stay in the middle, wait for the boss to spawn, take care of the boss, then go kill the portal. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, other than that, that's about it. Every, everyone, uh, this, my, this map is significantly easier than the third map, but I can see how it is much more difficult than the first map. So if you're very comfortable with the Dry Marsh, I definitely recommend you trying out the Crossroads. It is a fun, fun map. Things have been toned down a little bit, so it's not too difficult, but it's still very enjoyable. So I'll be making a video on the first map, which should be pretty straightforward. It's kind of just do whatever you want map. It's a great map to learn, but I'll, I'll get that out tomorrow. If you guys have any questions, let me know down below. And as always, thank you very much. I will see you on the next one.